So this is all the stuff you're going to need to detail up your kit. So the main paints we have in the back, we have a silver and a black paint. Now I'm using water-based enamel paints. Now the next paint you're going to need is a transparent or translucent orange paint. Uh, the brand I'm using calls it crystal. I've also seen it called glass paints. Now in a stretch you can get by with normal orange paint if you water it down one part water to one part paint. But I recommend finding the transparent glass paints. The other few items you're going to need is a light source. I'm using an LED book light. You're going to need a stiff bristled brush, which will help a lot, especially with our dry brushing. You also need some rub and buff or some gold paint. I recommend rub and buff. It works really well. And then the last thing you'll need is a little bit of water. You'll probably need some paper towels or a normal kind of rag. And then also, uh, in worst case, you might need some 600 grit sandpaper. Uh, so to do a little bit of wet sanding. So the first step we're going to do is using our transparent glass paint, we are going to paint all of the cracks. And this is what's going to color our light when we shine the light through the actual device. And also, this is going to make it look like it's glowing even when the lights are off. And the key is to just dry brush, which is basically get a little bit of paint on your brush and just spread it in a nice, even, thin layer. And then let it dry. I ended up doing two coats just to get that kind of the orange color I was looking for. But the first coat is just get the cracks done. Now the next step uh, we're going to work on is actually light blocking. And so we're going to dry brush with black now. And the key here is the stiff bristle brush and to paint and get the brush as flat as possible. Get tangent to the surface of the sphere. That way you're only painting the raised sections and leaving the sunken sections uh, open so the light can flow through. And the key is just to, to be careful around the edges. Now when you get your first coat done, it'll dry very quickly because we're doing dry brushing. Switch over to silver. Uh, I switch colors simply because it makes it really easy to see when I've got the full second coat. And also silver is a really good light blocker. So same idea, be very careful around the edges, keep your brush flat and just work your way around and paint all of the, the kind of raised surfaces on the, on the uh, Apple of Eden. Then when you finish that up, uh, you might have guessed, you're going to switch back and do a third coat in black. And at this point, you may start to see some uh, brush strokes or some like a little, you know, errors in your painting. When you finish this last step, uh, if you need to, you can go back and do a very, very, very light uh, wet sand using that 600 grit or higher paper just to take off the brush strokes and smooth everything out. It's not super vital. I didn't end up having to do it on mine, but you might have to do it depending on how thick your paint ends up being. So after you've done all the painting, the next step is to jam a light basically in the bottom of your, your, uh, your Apple of Eden and turn all of the lights off and get very dark. And what this helps you do, I'm using a bike light here, is see if there's any places you missed. If there's any place where light is coming through where we didn't want light. And so once you do this check and everything's good, you can move on to the, net, the kind of the last step, which is rub and buff. It's basically just an oil-based uh, paint that's kind of an amalgam of actual just normal carrier and little gold flakes. And you just put a tiny bit on your finger and you just mush it all over the place. That's why it's called rub and buff. And again, same idea with the dry, with the dry brushing. Just careful, you know, make sure you don't get too much on there. And, uh, you know, don't, don't get too uh, crazy, especially around the, the edges and the cracks. Uh, once you work all the way around and you get the gold all over the place, you're going to find that, uh, you know, it, it spreads really thin. It works really well. So uh, if you have any spots, though, where you don't quite have enough gold on there, you can go back and add a little bit more just to get a nice, even coat of gold. And the last stage of the rub and buff is to stick the, the, uh, the light source back in the Apple of Eden and then using a, comp you know, a dry brush with no paint on it whatsoever, just go through around the cracks and brush off any extra rub and buff that might have got stuck on the edges. That way you don't you know, kind of break up the nice clean lines with you know, weird lumpy bits hanging off the edges of your, of your raised surfaces. All right, so this is our last step. It is completely optional. But it just depends on what kind of uh, look you're going for with your Apple of Eden. Uh, this is the distressing phase. So after you finish with your rub and buff, obviously you can leave it just the way it is. You know, nice, shiny, and golden. But if you want to make it look a little bit older, a little bit more distressed, you can go through this process. So taking that same black paint that we used uh, 
for actually uh, light blocking. I'm going to go ahead and mix this up in roughly, you know, a two to one ratio of water to paint, which is kind of hard to do because paint doesn't flow as nicely as water. But you got basically one tablespoon of water and one, let's call that two tablespoons of water, excuse me, to paint. And then just mix this guy up with a brush. And what you're looking for is basically, you know, kind of a 33% a a solution of the black so that you have a nice semi transparent coat of black. So now here comes the super duper fun part. Grab yourself a spare towel or some paper towels. Make sure your hands are nice and dry. Take off all your jewelry and your watch and everything. And take your black paint. Make sure it's nice and mixed up. Yeah, let me throw on some light here. And then paint your own hand very quickly. Paint your hand and take your other hand and rub them together. So you're nice and disgusting and let that dry just on your hands for a few seconds to kind of suck off some of the extra water and then grab your your apple of eden and then just generally molest it and the minute you've kind of molested everything put it down immediately wipe off your hands with your towel so that they're dry and then continue the process it's rolling around rolling around and when you have you know, a nice kind of, you can see, gunge. You can just set this guy down and let it dry. And I use that same process for a lot of the kind of generalized distressing on my props. And if you want more distressing, you can either mix your paint stronger, you know, go to a one-to-one -one ratio of water to paint, or you can do what I do, which is always side on too little paint and then just do multiple coats. So let this dry, paint your hands up again, give a little bit of molesting again on the apple of Eden until you hit just the right amount of filthiness that you're looking for. And then the other thing you can do is if you end up with too much distressing or too much distressing maybe in one area, you can grab your rub and buff and then you can reapply it just to kind of, you know, fade out a little bit of your distressing to bring it back to being nice and shiny. But I'm going for kind of a light distressing on this one. So that's not bad. I might do one more coat and because we're doing very light coats and we dry our hands off afterward, they dry really quick. So you can probably wait five minutes and then go ahead and do another coat if you want. So I'll just go ahead and do another coat because hey, I'm right here. So again, mix up your paint, attack your left hand, rub the two of them together, give them a few seconds to kind of, you know, get all the drips off of yourself. And then give this guy a quick little roll around. Set it down. Dry your hands. And then do it again. And then when it's looking good, put it down. So now you can see you get that kind of, you know, dingy areas on it because it collects in some of the, the nooks and crannies of the 3D print and you get a nice uh, general gunge. And again, in any area, since this is still a little bit wet that you want to clean up, you can just kind of clean it up in select areas and you're good to go. And I recommend, uh, make, sure, oops, make sure you put, you know, screw in your bottom cap when you're doing this, that way you get even distressing all over it. I don't have a bottom cap because Shapeways forgot to mail it to me. But when you do have your bottom cap, make sure it's in. That way you get a nice, uh, even level of distressing over all of your pieces. So, lighting. There's tons of different ways to handle this. Uh, I just went and grabbed a bunch of stuff from my project box to show you. But there's a ton of different ways to do it. So just go crazy, figure out whatever you want. On my original Apple of Eden, I took an LED Christmas light set that I got off of Amazon. And I got quite a few of them. 
and I ripped out the board, I changed out the battery holder to something I got from an old flashlight, I took some cardboard and a bunch of soldering and some hot glue, and I relocated everything kind of to a central tube here, that way I still have all the patterns, and that's what I actually dropped into my original one to give me all the patterns. Now that's a lot of work, a lot of soldering, not a lot of people want to put all that effort in there, but there's easier options. The best option and the easiest i found is to just go and buy yourself a uh, battery operated bookmark light, just a nice bright white one, or you can get like the same idea, a battery operated white LED set, and you can just drop them right into your uh, Apple of Eden, and you can see you get really good light from just one bright LED. Uh, if you want patterns and other crazy things, uh, the options are out there. Uh, you can obviously go the route I did using the LED Christmas light set. You can also get uh, bike sets, you know, bike lights, cheap ones, and you can swap out the LEDs for amber or white LEDs. You can also get blinking lanyards from a lot of the kind of techno suppliers that, you know, obviously you can get white and other colors and you can just jam those in there. And then something I found that actually works really well and is relatively cheap is, again, from one of the uh, techno stores. Uh, I use Cool Glow. You can buy LED chaser necklaces and then you can either remove this tube or you can just jam, you know, buy it in white or orange and then you can just jam the whole frelling tube right in there. And it has different patterns and obviously, you know, this isn't the right color, but you get the idea that just by jamming in, you know, an off the shelf piece of uh, kit, you can get some nice cool glowing effects. So the options are open to you. You can go the more complicated, you know, custom pattern route, or you can go the super duper simple, big old bright white bookmark light, or you can go something in between with one of these kind of pre-made techno pattern generated uh, light sets. But the options are yours. So the last thing I did is I bought a levitating platform set. I actually got it off of Amazon. I'll have the link for that. And I took the base that came with it and I glued it into the bottom of the Apple of Eden. And what that lets me do is have the kind of cool little display option that makes it look all futuristic and fancy. It's also just a generally good tip for prop making and costuming that if you can buy something for relatively cheap and just bodge it into your design to get kind of a goofy or cool feature, it's a really easy way to go without having to build everything from scratch. And for me, I am a huge proponent of adding completely unnecessary and awesome features to all costumes and props. So give it a shot.